That was a little deep. Sorry, motor. What's up, everybody? It's Mark again, and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. And no, look, there goes a gator. Um, I'm out in the woods today. It is uh, like June 14th right now. And if you live in Florida, you know the last week we had a ton of rain. And this is the time to get out and start scouting. Why? Because this is when the deer stop using all that, that dry habitat during the dry season, and they're forced to the dry habitat in the wet season. They start confining their space, and that means it's easier to figure out where, they're, where they are, find their pinch points, um, and uh, get ready for season. So today, I'm gonna be scouting I'm gonna do my very, very best to show you guys what it is that I do when I scout, but it is hard to do this on video. So if you wanna get hands-on experience doing this, please check out our scouting workshop, which is actually coming up in like a week now. Um, by the time you're seeing this, it's gonna be June 29th in Jupiter, Florida. Um, all the details are at the link in the description. We hope to see you guys there. But if you can't make it, I'm gonna show you guys to the best of my ability, how I go about scouting. Um, on this video so first before i show you what i'm looking for out here i'm gonna show you what i'm looking for before i head out into the woods by doing some e-scouting so let's check that out first dude that is a big deer and he didn't go 30 yards oh my god <laughs> That was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo! What a rush. Money. That deer is dead. Tagged out, baby. You shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I saw him go what? down. All right guys, let's get into it. So um, I'm gonna walk you guys through a video of how I like to do this. So uh, just for the purpose of uh, this explanation, um, this here, we're looking at West Palm Beach and there's a, uh, a preserve here called Grassy Waters. And the habitat in at least a good portion of it is very similar to the habitat that you're gonna find in a lot of like South Florida wildlife management areas. So um, we're gonna zoom in on that and um <clears throat> take a look at what we got here and so typically when you look at like the landscape here in florida you're gonna see that there's like kind of this swiss cheese looking thing going on uh basically you've got these ponds kind of all over the place and in between them you've got like um the forests and stuff and because of that like wherever those ponds like come close together um there's gonna be uh, a pinch point right there's like a funnel shape of land and typically these animals they like to walk the edges of the trees or along the edge of the water and so if you can find the places where you get these really nice pinch points um, you can create some really good ambush spots so here's a, a couple examples there's one right there um, there's another one down here um, and so those are the places i like to identify and especially if you can identify them where they're along the edge of like a really long pond. And as you can see here, there's like this really long section of water. And so the reason I like those is because if a deer is on one side of that, let's say they want to get to the other side of that, they have no choice but to walk along the edge of it the whole way. So any pinch point they're going to encounter on the way, they're likely to walk through. And then uh, up at the top, you'll also, or at the bottom, you'll find a pinch point in this case. Um, and you know, they'll, they'll walk through those. So once I've identified a few of these, I like to go to those areas, um, and look 
to see what is on either side of them. Uh, you know, a lot of times in that actual pinch point, you'll find a good amount of tracks. But um, I also like to be sure that the habitat on either side is favorable for deer. I really like to find places where there's lots of food sources, um, lots of um, you know bedding cover, security cover, so that when they're hanging out on either side, they're feeling really comfortable. I can get in there, get set up on that pinch point. And if they wanna move from one of those kind of bedding areas or um, comfortable habitats, to the other one, they have to go through that pinch point and I'll be ready and waiting to uh, take a shot at them. So those are kind of the things that I'm looking for when I'm scouting. Um, another thing that we, you can kind of get into, like once you really know what you're looking at, is identifying different habitat types. Now in this particular case, we're really just looking at uh, pines, uh, like pine flatwoods um, with palmettos mixed in. Um, but over time you can start looking at like the different colors of the trees and identify like different species so you'll be able to identify like palms uh pines oaks um, and cypress and um, you know the more time you spend out in the woods looking around and comparing what you're seeing to these maps the better you're going to be at picking out those different habitat types but just for the purpose of like beginner level scouting i'm really just looking for these pinch points and that's what i'm going to key in on when i get to the woods so let's go back to the woods and i'll show you guys what i'm looking for when i get there so now that i've kind of showed you what i'm looking for on a um uh, when I'm e-scouting, uh, it's time to come out here and check and see if the places that you picked out while e-scouting are actually um, holding some of the habitat that it looks like they are um, on the internet. And then the next step is to figure out if deer are actually using it. And I'll give you a perfect example of that. I just went through this little trail that were covered, covered in cocoa plums, which is a great food source for deer, and they love them. And some of them were ripening and a bunch of them were still, um, you know, still growing. But I've never really seen tracks on that, um, that little trail because I think it's just an unsafe place for a deer to be. They don't have cover. Now, if you look at the place back here, this is something that a deer is going to feel really safe in. And as you can see, just by looking across it real quick, there's a lot of, um, diversity here i can see right here there's some let me get off my bike here <clears throat> there's goldberries that are starting to grow here um and goldberries are actually a type of holly and if you rip a leaf off i don't know if you guys will be able to see that but there's little spikes on it so it's in the holly family but those berries they'll usually ripen around november and they become a really great food source for the deer um, there's a ton of uh, saw palmettos out here and saw palmetto berries are again a great food source for deer um, those usually ripen in September um, so the fact that there's a whole bunch of different stuff to eat in here we've got flowers lots of palatable things there's grasses so there's all kinds of stuff for them to eat in here so they're gonna like hanging out in here and then to make it even better the plants like this this is something i always preach <clears throat> the plants are the right height see how like most of these plants are sort of like shoulder height um some of them are a little lower like belly button height the the reason that's important to me is because a deer is you know pretty short if they put their head down they disappear in this stuff you'll never see them unless you're way up in a tree of course um but when they put their head up they can kind of see across everything so if they hear a noise or they smell something they'll kind of put their head up and they'll be able to look and see what it is and uh and so i i, I find that that gives them a lot of security in a place like this because they 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 can hide but then if there is a threat or a potential threat they can check out what it is so these are the kinds of areas that i like to hone in on uh, when i'm scouting but um <clears throat> obviously it's such a large area and the deer can move anywhere in these areas so i try really hard to find these areas that are um, adjacent to a really strong pinch point preferably surrounded by other areas 
just like it so that when they want to travel from one to the other they have to go through a pinch point so i'm going to show you exactly what that looks like i'm not going to show you that because there's a feature there that uh you'll be able to recognize but on that side there is a pond like a big pond and there's no reason for a deer to go walking through the middle of a pond unless there's something in the middle of the pond that it wants to get to but otherwise that's not going to be a common travel route so they're probably going to walk the edges they love edges so there's an edge over there and there's an edge over here i'll show you this one <clears throat> See, there's a pond right there so they're likely going to be walking through this probably 60 to 80 yard section of woods or at least along the edge of it over here we have a field of gallberries back there is where i just was that's all those palmettos gallberries everything mixed together and back this way we have a lot of the same habitat and you can kind of see back there there's an oak hammock and um you know, so these are all different food sources, different kinds of habitat, and habitat diversity always leads to higher abundance of animals. So these are the kinds of areas that I really like to focus on. Um, so then once you get here, the next thing you really want to do is look for fresh sign, tracks, things like that. Now, as I mentioned, we've had a lot of rain, so I'm not going to find a lot of tracks right now. Um, honestly, if I find a single track, a single set of fresh tracks, like this one right here, look, here's a fresh track. doesn't look like much because it's in the wet stuff. So look, if I put my finger there, like it immediately starts to kind of fill in. The sand's kind of soft. So that, you know, in order for that print to still be there, it had to have been within the last 24 hours. Because look, this stuff, when rain starts hitting it, gone you know so look, if i start doing this pitter patter oh it's gone so like you know these are fresh tracks so that tells you that deer have been walking through here um so this is the kind of place that you might put a camera um you might want to hunt so when i find places like this i always like to this is why i like to bring my range finder with me when i scout so i'm like okay where am i gonna hunt and there's a couple trees right there. It's like if a deer's gonna walk here, okay, it's an 18-yard shot. <laughs> and actually, I know a guy that hunts that particular tree. And if you go close to it, you can actually see that it's got um, it's got climber marks in it, like all over the place. So this is a great pinch point. In fact, the guy that hunts that tree is the one that shot that hog last season that I got video of running around with an arrow stuck in its back. Apparently he's not a great shot, but you know what? We all make mistakes, it's all good. Um, so anyway, those are the kinds of things I'm looking for. Um, I'm not gonna put a camera here because again, I know a guy hunts right here um, and he's always here when I'm here. So I'm, I'm gonna leave him alone. Spot that I like to hunt um, is a little further back there. It's kind of a similar setup. So I'm gonna go over there and show you what I got going on there. All right, so once I get to the area that I like to hunt, I ditch the bike because you're gonna miss so much if you just ride around on your bike so this is the area I'm really interested in I had a camera up here last year I hunted it once saw some deer and there's there was a really nice buck that was hanging out here last year um, hopefully he's still alive I don't know but we're gonna put some cameras out around here see if we can find out So again, this is one of those areas I was talking about where the vegetation's pretty tall. So they can move around in here and you won't be able to see them. But if uh, they hear something, they can put their head up, take a look around and see what's going on. Um, I also like, there's a bunch of old buggy trails going through here and typically deer like to take the path of least resistance uh, whenever they can as long as it's not dangerous and these trails are much easier to walk than going through this thick stuff so there's lots of browse here lots of delicious things for them to eat there's all these berries i don't even know what these are um i probably should learn i think this is a type of sumac it's not poison sumac but 
anyway um, I'm really starting to get interested in learning all these different types of plants but we've got palmetto berries we've got muscadine uh, grape vines growing um, I, I haven't seen any grapes yet but when they grow uh, the deer love them uh, oh here we go here's some grapes check it out some muscadine grapes deer love munching on these I also recently learned by watching another YouTube channel that's all about like foraging and stuff uh, how to tell if grape vines are uh, purebred muscadines or if they're crossbred muscadines because apparently uh, back in the day when they brought like um, grapes to Florida they weren't surviving and they realized that they had to um, crossbreed them with the muscadines because there was some sort of disease that was killing all the grapes and the muscadines are um, uh, are resistant to it so pretty cool anyway the way that you tell is you look at these I think they call them tandrels these little sprigs on the end and if they're split in two then it's the, the domesticated crossbreed and if it's a single one like this it's a purebred muscadine so this is a real muscadine very cool so these are um, these are those salt palmetto berries I was talking about and come September archery season this is gonna be a hot um, food source for deer <clears throat> all right so here we are on the edge of this oak hammock and the reason I like this spot is uh, simply because deer like edge habitat and we've got all this habitat back here the same stuff that we've I've been talking about we got all kinds of berries all kinds of plants growing here and then we have the oaks which are gonna drop acorns so depending on the time of year and when things are ripening there's gonna be food sources all around here and my experience has been that there's always some does hanging out here and wherever there's does during the rut there's gonna be bucks so last year I hunted this tree right here and actually, as I climbed up the tree, I got halfway up the tree and spotted a doe right on the edge of the oak hammock, just munching out. Um, I hunted it that afternoon, and then some deer came in over here, and the wind was blowing that way, and they winded me. So I ended up um, deciding not to hunt that again, and I started hunting more on that side. But I, I didn't want to, like, scout at the time because, you know, you're just going to get your scent everywhere. So now's the time for me to go over there. I'm going to go check it out, see what I can uh, figure out if there's any good trees there. I'm probably going to hang a camera down that way, see what's using this, um, and see if I can find a better position uh, to hunt from than where I hunted last year. So up north, people really obsess over oaks. And I think because of that, people in South Florida like get obsessed with them. But I think that the biggest reason why people obsess over them up north is simply because during hunting season, it's the only thing that's really providing a prominent food source because the, the acorns drop late. But here in Florida, our season's so early. We have so many different food sources. And you really don't need to worry about acorns till like October. But this is my biggest beef with it with oaks this is why i don't you know i pretty much never find us hunting in an oak hammock it's because they block the wind so much that one it's just uncomfortable because the wind keeps you cool and two it causes the wind to swirl and so when you're hanging out in an oak hammock like i don't know my experience has been like the deer's gonna smell you like 90 percent of the time because your wind isn't consistent so i like to hunt trees like this like right on the edge of the oak hammock because they can be hanging out in here but at some point they're gonna have to leave so i like to figure out where the spots are that they're gonna leave and then um you know hunt those anyway here's another um another really cool florida plant this right here this is called beauty berry very cool let's see how the berries that grow at the stems of the leaves very strange um but these will eventually turn this like bright magenta pink and deer love eating these but so do we they make an excellent jelly so uh in a few more weeks when these all ripen 
probably be out here looking for some and I might show you guys how to make a jelly. But one thing that's really cool about these leaves, and I'm gonna take one of the broken leaves because it's not providing as much anymore, but if you crush this up, smell it. It smells kind of funny, but rub it on yourself and it is a natural bug repellent. So I've actually had the idea to take a bunch of these leaves and grind them up and like strain out the juices and make my own bug repellent. Might be a crazy idea, but I'm gonna try it. So this is a spot that I've kind of had my eye on for a little bit. So there's an entrance right there and I've actually had a camera there before and got a ton of action and I've thought about hunting this tree in the past and I'm thinking about it again I'm actually thinking of putting the camera here again but instead of putting it in there like I did last time I want to put it out here because I think there's probably a fair amount of deer that are just skirting the edge of this oak hammock here and I would like to get pictures of them so I'm going to figure out where I'm going to put a camera and then do it. All right, here's another fun fresh sign tip. So I just came walking over here, saw some big bugs flying around. Big, big bugs. And look, dung beetles. And dung beetles are attracted to fresh dung. And I'm saying, like, they get on the dung within, I mean, it's crazy, minutes. Minutes of it being dropped. So it looks like they've already eaten a lot of it but I mean they they get this cleaned up within hours so something took a crap right here within a couple hours that beetle over there and that is not doing too well in the water but I'm not gonna touch it it's covered in poop look here's another another cluster so something pooped here earlier that's hog poop so some hogs hanging out here for sure all right I'm gonna put the camera in this tree I'm probably gonna regret it because as you can see there's a lot of like plants that are just going to wave around my hope is that you know this is east so this oak hammock's going to block a lot of the wind so hopefully they won't be waving around and getting me a whole bunch of wind pictures um but uh the reason i'm doing this is because it's going to get this trail that goes into the oak hammock here and i've put a camera here before and gotten a lot of action so it's going to get that trail it's going to get the trail that goes that we just walked in on right by that tree um, and anything coming out of there crossing into here it's going to get so um, it's kind of getting all of it um, i'm going to put the camera up high i've got a climbing stick with me so i'm going to put it up here so that it's looking over all these plants um, and angle it down using a pine cone i'll show you guys what that looks like here in a second all right guys so i'm up on my stick about 10 feet up in the air hanging up my camera and um just waiting for it to get signal and then i'm going to go walk around in front of it and make sure that it can see all the trails that i want to catch deer on all right so my camera's hung first thing i like to do is like look at the angle and my first reaction is it's probably too high i need to bring it down a little bit like i like to have it high because it looks over the plants but um it's uh with the angle that's at right now if anything walks like right on this trail that i'm on i think it'll go right underneath it and it won't see it so I'm probably gonna have to angle it down a little bit um or not angle it down but move it down a little bit because i want to still be able to have it pointing back there to catch anything moving along there so i'm gonna bring it down probably probably about a foot nevertheless i'm gonna make it take a picture so i'm gonna get in front of it here And I like to keep in mind, like, if I'm standing right here and it takes a picture of me, or if I'm right here, like, this is as close as something's going to walk. So, like, if a deer's right here, like, I need to think of that deer being, you know, to my belly button. So I can see where my belly button is in the picture, get an idea of whether a deer would get caught. And frankly, I don't care about seeing the whole deer. I just want to see the antlers and the ears. All right. So surprisingly, um, the angle of it's actually better than I thought it was. Um, but I don't know if it's gonna catch a deer walking through here. So I'm gonna walk through here 
and see if it catches me. This is, this is, I do this every time I put a camera, especially when it's like not a very tight spot. So like I can see deer walking through here. I don't think they're gonna walk this way. I think they'll probably walk that way. But yeah, they're more likely gonna walk through here because there's a big bush right there. So that's probably the way they're most likely to walk. Let's see if it caught it. All right, well, unfortunately the camera wasn't picking up my, like when I was walking down that further trail. Kind of sucks, but it is gonna tell me at least which direction they're heading when they come out of or go into that oak hammock, but it won't catch them crossing this way. That sucks, but is what it is. Um, you know, it's a pretty big area. Um, it's still gonna give me some really good information. All right, so where I'm heading right now, um, spot back here. Now, I think that a lot of the deer that are hanging out in this oak hammock are moving their way back down there. Um, but there's a, a super sweet pinch point, um, like really tiny. And you can see there's this massive pond right here. This thing is huge. Um, and there's another really big one on the other side and they come together in like a 20 yard strip of land. Perfect little pinch point. And uh, I've never hunted it. I've never had a camera on it. So I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna put a camera on it. Um, like I said, I've hunted this area, this general area before. So I know there's a lot of deer here. I'm gonna go see if I can figure out which way they like to walk. So this is that pinch point I was talking about right up here. You can see there's a big piece of land, big piece of land behind me, big pond here, big pond there, and it comes together in this tiny little pinch point. I know there's gonna be tracks over there. I just don't know if they're gonna be there right now because we just had so much rain. <clears throat> so here you see again, this is that edge of the water right here. There's a pretty clear trail. It's hard to tell what animals are walking through here but you can tell there's like a pitter patter of tracks um usually when i find tracks or trails like this walk it walk it out until you hit a spot where there's like some softer sand and you should see whether they've been using it more recently unfortunately there's been so much rain it's kind of hard to tell right now where oh here we go so super fresh super fresh deer tracks right here came walking down here and that had to be today there's been too much rain so you can see the the pitter patter right here of the, the rain and it's not in the deer tracks that's how you know it's really fresh so they walked through here. I gotta find a spot to put a camera out here. There we go again. Super fresh tracks right there. Right here. They're walking this. So, uh, there's a bunch of bird pecking marks. Let's see if there's any other. Lots of birds definitely hanging out here. Oh, here's some uh, coyote tracks. Always good to keep an eye on those. Here's a gator drag. See that? That's where the tail of a gator dragged across. Lots of action here for sure. I think I'm gonna put a camera on this tree right here, facing right down here. Uh, that should give me some good pictures. My camera is right here in this tree. And it's overlooking this sort of intersection of trails. There's a trail going across here. That's where those fresh tracks were. Um, and then there's a trail that cuts across here. And as you can see, this is a tiny, tiny little pinch point. And this is a perfect kill box. So um, I did some range finding, found a tree that I like. There's a tree back there. Um, I don't want to waste my free pictures, so let me walk down this way. Um, so I like to think about which way the wind usually comes from. It's usually going to be coming out of the east, blowing across this way. So I want to have a tree that's on the west side 
of this pinch point and uh, still has the ability to shoot easily to all points. And that is the tree right there that I would set up in. I could shoot all the way to this edge. If they come walking in this way, this is gonna be 20 yards. So like every shot that I would get out of that tree would be inside of 20 yards, which is pretty darn sweet. Anyway, guys, that's that's all the scouting I wanted to do today. I got those two cameras out, and um, I'm sure after I do this outro, I'm going to find some cool stuff that I want to show you guys. I'll just add that in. But um, so on my way back, what I always like to do is like whichever spots I found that uh, I would potentially hunt. I like to think about how I'm going to get there quietly in the dark. Um, so for this particular spot, um, I could literally ride my bike down to the other side of this pond here and um so what i might do i have a crappy kayak and i might just uh drag that thing behind my my bike and stash it in the bushes there um and so to get to this spot i would probably kayak across this pond that way i'm constantly um going into the wind right to my tree do it real silently so that would be super sweet the other spot where i put the camera that spot's gonna be a little harder to get to so i'm gonna walk back to that one and i'm gonna find a, a nice easy way that i can walk in um, without making too much noise and i'm gonna track that on my uh, my app so that when if i decide i want to hunt that if i get like a lot of pictures then i can basically um, just follow the track that i'm about to make so anyway like I said, this stuff is really hard to show you guys in uh, in a video. Um, I'm doing my best here, but we have the scouting workshop coming up in a week. Um, I think you guys would learn a lot from that, a lot more than you have from this video because you get to get that hands-on experience and see all this stuff um, in person. Plus, we'd love to meet you guys. So um, come on out. It's a, uh, a combo event with backcountry hunters and anglers. We're probably gonna have some raffles there. There's gonna be some delicious food for lunch, all wild game. Um, and uh, it's just gonna be a great time. So uh, hopefully see you guys there. It's June 29th, um, Jupiter, Florida. And again, all the details are in the description. And uh, that's all I got for you guys right now. So we'll catch you guys in the next episode.